I'm wearing my former astronaut garb here, my NASCAR uh, jacket. Uh, but uh, I don't wear it that often because it, it's a little crazy, you know, it's a little wild. And uh, Casis, we're, we're headquartered in Florida uh, near Disney, and I don't want people to think that I'm uh, from the wonderful world of Disney. I'm just kidding you. But anyway, th it's a lot of fun. Thank you all for coming. Uh, parents, thank you for bringing your, uh, your, your young people and, and for the teachers in the room as well. Um, I, I'm told that I've got to be pretty quick here because this is the Greg and Stephanie show. We've got to fit it all in an hour. So I'm going to go fairly quickly through my presentation so we have time for some, uh, some questions. I'm going to share with you the excitement of our space program, our nation's space program. It's one of inspiration. It's one of determination, of teamwork, working together to do amazing things. On the left, you can see the Apollo program. Um, when I was a kid, when I was seven years old, I was inspired by the, by the Apollo program. And we as a nation did hard things. And we built vehicles after the Apollo program. Uh, we went uh, to the uh, Skylab. We built the space shuttle and went to and from space on a regular basis. And now in the middle, we have the International Space Station. It's been a fully assembled. And there are five people, two Russians, two Americans, and, and a woman, by the way, who has set the record for the most time in space just this week. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yep, she was on TV. And then, uh, and then finally, uh, there's also a European. So they're living and working in space. We've been up there for over a decade. And then there's the future. You might hear Elon Musk talking about, uh, about us going to Mars. It's not going to be my generation that's going to go to Mars. It's going to be yours, and it's out there for the taking. It's not easy. You've got to work hard. You've got to be determined. But one of you in this room could be the first person to stand on Mars. Um, and it was very exciting to be in space, to be representing um, our agency, our nation, and our world up in low Earth orbit. But you know, it, uh, it started with a spark, as I said, when I was seven years old. I was sitting next to my brother and sister at my grandparents' house in Michigan, watching Neil Armstrong step on the mood. It was a, it was a black and white TV. It was late for me, but I understand it wasn't that late at night. But that night, I went outside and I looked at the moon and I could not believe that a human being was standing and walking around on the moon. And so, 30 years later, 30 years of loving math, of getting passionate about the things that made me tick, flying airplanes, being influenced by my parents, my teachers, and a lot of luck, I joined this group of individuals now almost 20 years ago, the penguins. The penguins, the, the flightless birds that would never fly, and we were preceded by the sardines, the biggest astronaut class that ever in the history of, of the groups. There were 75 of us waiting to fly in space. And we, and it, you know, it didn't, it, it wasn't over there, that's just when it started. Being inspired working with people through problems. Every one of these people I had a personal relationship with. Almost everyone flew in space, but not everyone did. Not everyone is in our class now is still with us. But each one of these people had determination and the path that led them to the point where they joined the class of 1998. For me, it took almost 10 years. So now we're talking 40 years, 30 years, from the idea, and then 10 more years. That actually kind of dates me, makes me sound like I'm over 50, which I, I am. But this was the first chance that I had to fly. And at that time, we were flying space shuttles about three to five times a year. And the mission was to build the International Space Station. And so you saw that video, and it was a, an abbreviated video, and we had just joined up the space station, but it was the final assembly mission of the International Space Station. I guess you can argue any one of the last 
shuttle flights um, uh, share that uh, designation. But what was really important is all those people working together, and, and uh, it was an honor to be a part of that uh, uh, space station assembly uh, sequence. This was, uh, this was the end of that flight that you just saw a piece of. And what's meaningful to me is the person who's talking to Mark Kelly, the commander, uh, back in 2011, this was the final flight of Endeavor, the NASA administrator, came, I met him 20 years prior, and I was a fighter pilot, that, that I was just learning about the space program, and Charlie Bolden was at that time, he had flown in space once as a pilot. And I went to a meeting in North Carolina, a meeting not like, unlike this, where he was talking about the space program with the administrator at the time, Dan Golden, and I went up afterwards with great interest, and I said, Charlie, this is awesome. I've always wanted to be an astronaut, but it was just a dream. And he said, here's what you need to go do. Go do this. And I did what the man said. And if it was not for that one meeting that I had, you know, happenstance with Charlie Bolden in 1993, that would have been one of the links of the chain that wouldn't e even have enabled me to be an astronaut. So how lucky am I? Well, in this picture, he was the NASA administrator, the top person of all of NASA, and he came to greet us after that flight. I mean, the, you know, the full circle of, of uh, an idea, believing in yourself, and actually executing it, and, and he was there. He, he just left office uh, recently, and he's a great leader in the aerospace community, but an important touch point in my journey uh, to become an astronaut. And so, at that time, we were building the space station. At this moment, the space station assembly was complete, and NASA was working hard at transitioning out of the shuttle into what came next. And the space station is, is, the, is what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about for the next 10 minutes or so, because on the space station, uh, we needed to use that facility not only to know how to live and work in space for long duration, but also to solve problems here on the Earth. The International Space Station, one of the greatest engineering marvels of our time. 16 nations, about 35 or, shuttle, or, or 35 or 40 shuttle flights, over a decade putting this beautiful facility together. And now we are using it. It's our current space program. And like I said earlier, we have people living and working on the International Space Station. Not only to understand how to live in space long duration, how to use that as an outpost, a next step to go to the moon or Mars, but also to take advantage of the microgravity, continuous microgravity, that changes things for scientists. Looking at the world from a different perspective. Studying things outside of our atmosphere with researchers, no kidding scientists, who are living and working on the space station. But also the space station is about education. Everything that we do on the space station can have an educational objective, and that's why we're here today. To talk about education, the exciting things that we're doing on the planet and off the planet. And so I'm gonna share with you three stories of determination with students who are actually doing work on the space station. The first is a group, I, I went to this group about three years ago, and it's, a, it's a, a school in the middle of central Florida. They're passionate about space. They had this big rocket launch uh, activity that I was you know, helping them judge the rocket winner, and they have a wonderful uh, science curriculum. Very underserved, very underrepresented, upper-represented populations, and, and, and not, not the richest community but they had passion. They learned about what we could do on the space station. They started writing code, and the code interfaces with these satellites that actually are on the space station, and the Zero of Robotics program now has grown to a competition with over 2,000 students all around the world who compete sending their code up the space station. And in 2016, the Bach Academy, after the, their code failed the first two years, ended up winning the entire competition. 
The second story, Rachel Lindbergh. And she's standing next to Anna Sophia, who's also done experiments on space, but I'm, not, I'm gonna be talking about uh, Rachel. But Rachel designed an experiment in the, in the Students' Space Flight Experiments Program, SSEP, and she designed an experiment to better understand electronics with these little tin whiskers that, that interfere and how spaceflight, microgravity, uh, might change that phenomenon. She designed the experiment. The first time she designed it, she actually was eliminated in, from the program, did it again, and guess what? It was set to launch two year, years ago on Orb 3, the one that exploded on TV. She learned from her experience. She redesigned the experiment to be better, and then it was manifested uh, last uh, year and a half ago on SpaceX 7. Does anyone remember the other spaceship that blew up on launch? Spaceship 7. Twice her experiment went up in smoke. Did she give up? No, she designed a third one, and it finally launched last April, and, and it, it has gone to space, and so that sort of determination is what our nation has done in the space program for the last 50 years. And I'm gonna close off with one that is really close to my heart, and this is uh, Christy Darcy. Uh, Christina Darcy and I uh, first met, uh, I was at a talk like this, I was an active astronaut at the time, it was in Detroit, it was the YES, the Youth for Engineering and Sciences. We had 5,000 students in the Lions Stadium in Detroit, and I was sharing the stage with a sports science person, you know, sports science where they talk about the engineering and sports equipment. She and I shared the stage and I told the story of my first space flight and she was in the audience. I didn't know her, but she had been exposed to me. Then what she did is she got a fire and an excitement about a dream that had been hers since she was seven years old. And so she called NASA Glenn, the closest uh, uh, space center, uh, in De Detroit, got an internship. She ended up working with NASA Glenn, and then she uh, enrolled in Penn State, and she was becoming an engineer when I first met her, coming back from my second space flight. She went out to Johnson Space Center, she was on her second internship, and she said, hey Greg, I heard you talk at YES in Detroit three years ago, I never thought I could do it, now I'm an intern at Johnson Space Center, I just wanted to shake your hand. I was so excited, this was 2011. Two years later, I was working in education and it happened to be in Cleveland, Ohio, just for chance, it was a 12 month detail on it for education. And my people came to me and they said, hey, there's this program called YES in Detroit. We're thinking it's a little bit too far, we don't have the resources, I said, oh yes we do. So we went back up to YES, there were 8,000 kids this time at YES, and I invited Christy to share the stage with me and tell her story. Since then, she has now applied to be an engineer at NASA, and she is a working engineer. When I left NASA, she had just started her work. So these are the sparks that, that, that bring us uh, educators uh, to life. This is why we keep coming back. I'm hoping that one of you might be the next uh, Christina Darcy. In this country, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, what religion, where you come from, everyone has opportunity. But the way to make that opportunity is for you to try. Try and fail and then try, try again. For the space program, it's an exciting life. It's wonderful for me, my family, you know, my, uh, the state, our country, and our planet, and we are exploring people, and we are going to learn, learn things in space, and you can be part of that. So I'll close with one final uh, elevator pitch, and that is Space Station Explorers. The space station, we do lots of science, but about 10% of it is dedicated to education. So you can go to this website, and you can find out new things about what we're learning in space, and you can get involved and be a part of our future space program. All right, thank you.